De Morgan's theorem is super important, so I want to spend just a minute kind of going through that. Um, so unlike many of the other theorems, De Morgan's theorem is not at all obvious, and so I think it helps to actually write it out and prove to ourselves that this really, really does work. So De Morgan says that if I have A and B, and that whole thing is inverted, that is equivalent to not A or not B. So saying if I, instead of inverting a whole component, invert each of the individual variables and switch an AND to an OR, that that's equivalent. Um, or the, the corollary to De Morgan's theorem, or the, or the, the dual of it, is that A or B, uh, inverse the whole thing, equals not A, not B. Okay, so let's write this out and, and see whether this makes sense. Okay, so we've got some variable A, some variable B, and so we can go ahead and write the truth table for this. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so not A and B. Uh, so this would just be a NAND gate. Um, so A and B will only be true on this final row where both A and B are one. And so then inverting that would give us ones everywhere else. So we have one, 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 zero. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just keep extending this table. So not A would be, and then we'll go ahead and write not B, and then we'll put in not A or not B. All right, so not A, so then let's be one, one, zero, zero. 1, 0, 1, 0. And then when either of these are true, so this will give us 1, 1, 1, and 0. And we see that, yes, in fact, this does match the truth table here. OK, and we could do the same thing uh, for the other case, uh, but I won't, I won't go through that right now. So if I take De Morgan's theorem, so that this ends up being really powerful because I can exchange AND gates uh, for OR gates or NAND gates um, for NOR gates or vice versa. I could use it to you know, get rid of inverters or, or do other things to actually simplify my circuit in pretty dramatic ways. Uh, and this has become, was such a common thing uh, that we can think about De Morgan's theorem just directly on a schematic. So you can imagine that if I have not A or B, not B, um, so I'm just going to represent the not with the bubbles like we've been doing in a schematic, um, but I'm going to put the bubbles on the input here. And then De Morgan's theorem says if I convert the or to an and, and I remove the inversion from the input and put it on the output, so that I'm inverting the and of the two, that is equivalent, that, so that is De Morgan's theorem. Uh, and the dual is the same thing down here below. And so what the, this is what's called bubble pushing. So it says if I were to take these bubbles and I just kind of like push them through and stick them on the output um, and then convert the OR gate to an AND gate as I do it, then that is applying De Morgan's theorem. I can actually do this on a logic diagram directly. Okay, so let, let's go ahead and see an example here. So this is figure 2.36 from the textbook. So if I've got this and let's say, for example, that I don't have any OR gates, like I've, I've got a bunch of NAND gates and I've got to, I've got to deal with that. Um, and it actually turns out it's, if you're building gates with transistors, which is what we do, we can only build inverting gates. So it's, it's much easier to build NAND and NOR than it is to build AND and OR. 
Um, in fact, the way we build AND and OR is to build, build an AND and then stick an inverter on the output. So, so given that NAND gates are cheaper, it'd be nice if we could convert some of these to NANDs in the process. So let's use um, the involution theorem that says if, if I negate something twice, then that's equivalent to just keeping it the same. So let me just put some bubbles here and I'll put a corresponding bubble on the input. So I'm inverting the output of this and then I'm inverting it again before I go in. So that, that's logically the same thing. And let's do the same down here. Um, and now that I've done that, I've turned these two gates into NAND. Um, and now this is in a position where I could do a bubble push. So I can push this gate, uh, go ahead and push these bubbles through to the output. Uh, so let's just erase them from here. And now go redraw the bubbles out on this side. And this now has turned from an OR gate uh, into this itself is an AND. OK, now that we've been successful in converting uh, two AND gates and an OR gate into three NANDs, which in terms of saving transistors is actually a pretty huge win, you might say, well, can we do that with this one as well? Um, the problem is we've already got a bubble here. So we can't, you know, we can't add another bubble here and a bubble here and hope that everything's going to work out right? and add some kind of bubble here. And then we, we're going to need an inverter on this or put, put a bubble wherever this thing came from. Uh, that turns out to be a mess. And, and it's not gonna save us anything. So if this is the only piece of the circuit we've got, then, then we've gotta stop here and we'll just leave this as an AND gate. So bubble pushing can be, if you're working with a logic diagram and you're actually trying to think about how do I minimize this logic thing that I've built, um, bubble pushing can be an effective method. Um, oftentimes, you might have a minimal Boolean equation, but that's not necessarily minimal in the number of chips that you need in the circuit. Um, and I should say, um, bubble pushing was probably more useful when we were working with discrete chips. And now that everything is in an FPGA and you just take the entire design and you, you send it to the computer to crunch and minimize, um, this thing, technique is probably not as, as useful um, as it may have been in the past. Um, but hopefully it's still another way to think about the same basic ideas. To, you know, once you understand De Morgan's theorem graphically, you understand it logically, uh, you understand it on a truth table, uh, then hopefully you have a richer understanding of it overall.